What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be going over three item and skill builds you should definitely be trying in 7.22e. The patch just developed a little bit, I'm seeing some trends, I watch a lot of replays personally, and on Dota Pro Tracker, one of my favorite tools to watch replays and actually learn Dota, is showing that pros in recent games, over 300 games, have a 60% win rate on Enchantress. 60% over 300 games. That's very convincing to me. Very, very convincing. I've thought this hero is good since last patch, and... It's still good. A lot of pros are picking it up. If you haven't played it yet, it's one of the easiest heroes in Dota. Listen to my build. You're also going to hear about Morphling and Bloodseeker, as well as two more honorable mentions. And let's get into it. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential. But for now, let's hop into the video. So the first hero we're going to go over is Morphling. Now, specifically, it's Morphling with Earthshaker. Recently, if you guys aren't aware, it's very important to note that Morphling Axe now allows you to steal teammates' spells, right? So, this means that you can draft in according to this, right? So, recently, I saw a Morphling game. I was actually looking at a top where he played Tiny, and a Morphling he, he played with went this great item build. So, the item build goes like this. Six Tangos, a Salve, Slippers, and three Branches. That's your starting items. Moving on into the early game, you're going to go Treads, two Wraith Bands, Wand, Lincolns, and Axe. The notable part about this build is all the stats. Basically, going Lincolns and Axe on a carry would typically mean that you have very limited damage, right? There's no carry that can go this build, besides Morphling. In the early game, you're going to have the Treads, Wand, and two Wraith Bands to snowball your damage, and then with the Lincolns, and once you hit that key Ags timing, you're going to be able to turn into an Earthshaker, an Earth Spirit, or an Ember Spirit. Those are the three heroes I recommend trying it out with first. You know, you can try it. There's a billion combinations you can try it out with. But funny enough, a lot of the ESs, all three of the ESs, are very good steals for Morphling. So if you see any of those, or you want to convince your friend to pick Earthshaker in particular, or, I mean, Earth Spirit's really flashy too, I recommend you try it out. In terms of skill build, you want to start with your shift, then go into adaptive strike, back into shift. Note that Morphling's spike in the laning stage is his shift at level 3. At level 1, you have to play very defensive. You've lost not only your early stats due to a recent patch from, that you get from shift, but you also have lost a base armor, meaning basically your hero is unbelievably weak in the early levels, right? So you kind of, you definitely need to wait so you have at least level 2 shift before you try to do anything crazy. I'm personally a fan of taking waveform at level 4. I know some people will take the adaptive strike because you don't have too much mana, which I totally understand, but I do think there are some lanes where if you get ahead, adaptive strike will actually limit your kill potential and waveform will actually increase it, as getting 3 or 4 more right clicks off can be the difference. At level 5 you're going to take shift again, at level 6 ult, and finally maxing out the shift at 7. Now, remember, you want to make sure you're split pushing and getting your levels up, right? Sometimes fighting won't necessarily net you the most amount of levels, you know, depending on how well the enemy team is doing. Because what's important to note is that you, when you get your Ags, you want to have at least your level 15 minimum, and at best, your 15% CDR, right? You get the 20 second morph duration at level 15, that talent, and you get 15% CDR at level 20. And in combination with the Ags, it's monstrous. Moving on to Enchantress. So we talked about Enchant in the intro, but now let's get into his item build first off. So for starting items, you want to go for three tangos, a circlet, a branch, two fairy fires, and two mangoes. I think this build is a really nice culmination of what you need on Enchantress. The two fairy fires and two mangoes give you basically enough to sustain through the early game in terms of damage and mana, right? The two mangoes allow you to spam your nature's attendance. The two fairy fires also give you four damage, which is potent considering you right click so much. Then the branch and the circlet give you decent stats and a bit more damage. And the three tangos are all you need considering you have a built-in heal. Moving on after that, the first item you should buy is Ring of Bassi. It now gives you 8 damage, it allows you to continuously have your creeps in advantage because it gives them extra armor, and it gives you some mana regeneration. Overall, I think Bassi is very very underrated and a great pickup on Enchantress. For your second item, you want to pick up a wand. This item basically just allows you to sustain, and then in the first case where they actually try to kill you, you're going to have a very large wand if you buy it early, and basically you'll always turn it. You'll always turn it. After that, you can move into a bracer if you really want to go giga stats and just chill, or you can go into treads and buy something like the glove of haste early, or even just boots to close the gap, and that's pretty good as well. Now, where it gets weird is here. 
I've seen some players actually buying Orchid on Enchantress. In fact, I've actually tried it out myself, and it feels very good. Now, you lack quite a bit of HP, right? But if you have your Wand, and you have your Bassy, and your Treads, Orchid doesn't feel so bad. I mean, you have enough HP, especially if you're maxing out your Untouchable and Nature's Attendance, which we'll talk about. And then Orchid gives you insane damage, very good attack speed, and the ability to kill heroes that you typically wouldn't be able to kill, like Storm, Ember, and Slurk. But let's say you don't want to go for Orchid and you want to go for a build that's a lot easier to manage, one that comes online a bit earlier. Then I recommend you go the normal items that I talked about into Dragonlance, then into Hurricane Pike. Now, even if you buy the Orchid, you should buy Dragonlance afterwards anyway. It's just kind of like the Ench item. Basically, you can skip the Orchid, go D-Lance into Hurricane Pike, and then you have the option, if it's a hard Ench game, to go straight into BKB. If they have a lot of magical damage, you can go Hooded Defiance. Or, if you're feeling it, you can go Dragonlance straight into Ags, into Moonshard, and this is a very, very high DPS build. But do consider that if you haven't used Hurricane Pike Ench yet, it is one of the best part of her kit. Especially if you have any hero that gives vision, like Bounty Hunter or Slaughter, or maybe even a Bat Rider who can give flying vision. Basically, you're going to be able to get four long range hits off that one shot the majority of heroes. Now, let's get into skill build for Enchantress. At level 1, you're always going to take your Nature's Attendance. Don't even consider taking anything else. This is your ability that allows you to trade, it allows you to trade at the rune, it allows you to trade in the lane, and because you have two mangoes that we talked about, you're going to be able to spam it. Now, if you're in a lane that can't pressure you at all, like Giga Week, Giga Giga Week, maybe it's like a, a Terror Blade and he's already used meta, or maybe it's a Wraith King and you feel like his support is garbage, it's like a, it's like a Life Stealer of Pause 5. Hopefully you guys get the point, uh, obviously I'm sort of joking, but if you really feel like you can pressure the lane hard and you have a giga kill lane, taking enchant at level 2 and 3 is the way to go. This allows you to dominate the creeps in the large camp, and if you get a hellburst measure or your satyr camp, or even a wild wing, the lane is basically one. It, almost no hero can deal with it, and when, especially when you have level 2 enchant, you can keep those creeps going all the time. And then at level 4 and 5, I still sort of recommend you go Untouchable. Now, I, I, I have tried out the Nature's Attendance and Enchant Max build, where you just completely skip Untouchable, and I'm not so sure about it. It actually does leave you quite vulnerable to a lot of heroes. Uh, so what I'm going to recommend, and I think is a great build in this case, is Nature's Attendant at level 1, Enchant at 2 and 3, and then Untouchable at 4 and 5, and of course getting your ult at 6. However, however, you can consider that you don't have to get Enchant at all. In fact, I just played a game. I know, it sounds like I play a lot of Enchant. I feel like I just have games that... Uh, are, are, are stuck in my mind. But basically, you can just go this build. Nature's Attendance at level 1, Untouchable at level 2 and 3, and then Nature's Attendance maxed out after that. I feel like the max, like the biggest spike of Untouchable is actually its level 2 spike. So leaving it at that and then maxing out your Attendance will give you a nice mix between staying alive against physical and also magical and of course pure damage. All right, and moving on to the last hero of this video, excluding the honorable mentions that I like to do at the end for some reason, is Bloodseeker mid lane. Now, this hero got a big buff, making blood right from an 18 second cooldown at level one to a 12 second cooldown at level one, as well as another armor. And basically, now I really like him as a mid laner, especially with this new build that I've come up with. You know, I'm sure other people have done it, but this is something I've speculated. So your starting items for mid lane Bloodseeker are going to be a Stout Shield, a Quelling Blade, two mangoes, and a branch. Now the differentiation here is that you have two mangoes and a branch instead of your typical slippers. And the goal behind this is basically that you have enough mana regeneration to cast Blood Rite off cooldown. It's a great spell because it can allow you to zone off your enemy from denies, right? You can set yourself up very easily for denies, and you can secure some key CS like range creeps and melee creeps with it in the early waves. Now, items after your starting items are phase boots. I actually do think you should basically rush phase boots. You can buy raindrops or maybe a wand in between if you feel like it's proper for that game. But typically, rushing phase boots is the name of the game for Bloodseeker as you want to amp that movement speed even more and take advantage of the fact that you're getting attack speed. After your face boots, you want wand. It's actually very important that you stay alive in fights and have enough mana to cast your spells. And then this is where things get weird, and it's where actually I'm not so certain about Bloodseeker yet. If it's a good blade mail game, you can go blade mail. Right? You can just go blade mail. Good blade mail heroes are heroes maybe such as Gyrocopter, Luna, Quap, Puck. You really have to feel that and be like, can this hero control their damage? Because if it's a hero like Wraith King and you buy blade mail, it's not gonna do too much. But if you feel like it's a bad blade mail game, you can just go straight for the Radiance, basically going Phase Boots 1 into Radiance. You can buy a Midas before it as well. This does help you farm a bit and keep your levels up, 
but I do think getting the Radiance as early as possible and allowing yourself to fight and especially hit the next item timing, which is very important, is pretty crucial, right? And that next item timing is BKB. So Radiance BKB, I think, is your Giga Spike, where basically you rupture someone, you put down your Blood Right, you BKB and run in, and you're gonna you have a lot of success. It's similar to playing Wraith King in that regard, where you just sort of cast your stun, walk in, and burn people. That's sort of what you want to go for on Bloodseeker as well at some point. Now after that, I actually don't think you should scale into some sort of like magical build. I tried it, doesn't feel that good in my opinion, even like the Ags per se. Uh, I think instead, after your BKB, you can go for items such as MKB, Butterfly, Mjolnir, Scotty, Satanic, really any of these if you feel fit for the game, where you kind of have to judge what you need to do. MKB if they have evasion or you need extra damage, Butterfly if they have right clickers and you need extra damage, Mjolnir if you need to split push and maybe they, they lack some ability to deal with magical damage or have a lot of armor. Satanic and Scotty if you want to stay alive. For skill builds, this is what I'm changing up a bit, right? I actually have seen a Bloodseeker recently, even with this change, go as Q at level 1, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Your Q does allow you to actually keep your HP up, get denies and last hits. However, what I'm going to recommend you try out, and I've tried it out myself, I feel like it's quite good, is starting with your W and basically just using it off cooldown to zone out the enemy. Then you take your Q at level 2, and at level 3, 4, 5, and 7, you're going to max out your Thirst, and of course taking your ult at 6. Right after you max your thirst, you're gonna max out your blood right and move on from there, right? And I think this is kind of what will help you with Bloodseeker because basically in the early laning stage, you have two of the better laning abilities now your Q and your W. And being able to throw down the blood right and then rage yourself is very potent in the laning stage. It does a lot of damage and heals you for high, high amounts. All right, and the two honorable mentions I want to go over for all you support players, because I know I listed three cores, but for supports, if you're looking for some fun supports to play, I recommend Skyrath Mage. I know I've been talking about this hero for a while now, but I think he's still very, very good. Taking Concussive or your Q at level 1, you're going to do very well in the lane. He got a 25 attack range buff last patch. Super strong laner, in my opinion. And the build you should go is Null Talisman, two crowns, Atos, and a Glimmer of Rags. Uh, obviously, you can fit boots after your Atos. Uh, just to make sure you keep up that movement speed. And the final one is Ogre Magi. If you haven't tried out Midas Ogre Magi, a ton of fun. I mean, you just gotta try it out. It's it's actually a blast. In fact, you can play it as a mid laner, off laner, even a safe laner if you're a psycho. And basically, you can go the Midas into Aether into Ags. And if you multicast your Midas, you get a ton of farm. And it's, it's I don't know. It's really, it's really just so much fun. So if you just want some fun and you're tilting out of your mind, go into Unranked, pick Ogre, and run down mid. I right, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like, subscribe. Let me know which of these heroes you think is the best of this patch, or if there's anyone in particular that I'm missing. You know, because I, you know, I might be missing something. So let me know. Thanks for watching. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.